um, feed the children of God this morning. Amen. Greetings, greetings, my brothers and sisters in South Africa and wherever else you could be following these prayers from. I pray that the good Lord blesses you so much today and answers your prayer. I just want to commend you, my brothers and sisters, that you have chosen to seek the Lord at a time when people are seeking all sorts of things. When there is a crisis around us, people turn to what they think will give the greatest help. But I want to thank God that you, brothers and sisters, have chosen to turn to the Lord. And to think of it that it is 5 a.m. in the morning in South Africa, and so many of you I'm seeing almost 200, over 200 people, you know, having just come online to seek the Lord in prayer. I just have one request from the Lord to the Lord that may the good Lord answer your prayer prayer. Jesus woke up early in the morning to pray, to prepare for his ministry. Surely we are no better than Jesus. I just want to once again thank you so much, and I pray that keep up the good work that you are doing, and may the good Lord bless you so much and abundantly. The message I would like to share with you today, uh, my brothers and sisters, is titled, You Need the Fourth Man, the Third Man, and the second man. You need the fourth man, the third man, and the second man. I'll repeat again that you need the fourth man, the third man, and the second man. That you need. That means for your welfare, for your good, you must have this man that is referred to as the fourth man. And you must have this man that is referred to as the third man, that you must also have this man that is referred to as the second man. Let's pray again. Father in heaven, make this message simple and clear that your children listening at this moment will understand your will and follow your will and live according to your will and that your blessings will be upon us, that this early morning that your children have sought to seek you, you will answer their prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You need the fourth man, the third man, and the second man. You need the fourth man, the third man, and the second man. In Daniel chapter three, verse 24 and 25, we meet the fourth man. King Nebuchadnezzar threw into the burning furnace three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What was their mistake for them to be thrown in the fire? It is because they refused to worship the idol that the king had set. And we are told that when he threw them in the fire, Daniel chapter 3, verse 24 and 25, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied to the king and said, certainly, your majesty. Verse 25. Then he said, hey, look, I see four men walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. You need the fourth man, the third man, and the second man. Ladies and gentlemen, when three men who are faithful to God were thrown into the fire to die, a fourth man appeared and saved their life. When three innocent men were thrown in the fire to suffer for what they were not guilty of, because they could not worship an idol, they could only worship the God of heaven, the fourth man appeared. I would like to let you know, my brothers and sisters, that the fourth man was God the Son. The fourth man was Jesus Christ. I just came to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that you need the fourth man. 
You need the fourth man wherever you are thrown in a crisis. Life will bring a crisis always. It is possible today we are waking up to a crisis. It is possible today that COVID-19 is creating a crisis. Whenever there is a crisis, you need the fourth man. Because the fourth man is always in the crisis. I have not said that he comes into the crisis. He is in the crisis when he knows that his sons and daughters are going to be thrown into the crisis. The fourth man goes ahead into the crisis and waits for them in the crisis to see what will happen. And nothing will go wrong because God stays in the crisis to wait for his sons and daughters. I serve a God and we serve a God who stays in trouble to wait for us. You need just to familiarize yourself with the Psalm 46 verse one and two. If the Bible says that God is our refuge and strength an ever present help in trouble, in trouble, ever present in trouble, not present outside trouble, not present at the door of trouble waiting. When you jump in, he jumps in. The Bible says he's an ever present help in trouble. God stays in trouble, not because he loves trouble, but because he knows that one day you and me will be thrown in trouble and we will need him. The fourth man stays in trouble, waiting for his children who are thrown in trouble so that he can save them in trouble. The fourth man stays in trouble. If he stayed in the fire, he will stay in the ICU units where people are struggling for oxygen. If he stayed in the fire, he will stay in families that are facing crisis. If he stayed in the fire, he will stay in the homes of the jobless whose businesses are going down. He stays in trouble so that he can save his children out of trouble. You need the fourth man. I believe you now agree with me that I need the fourth man. You need the fourth man. But we also say that you need the third man. So we have said that the fourth man is Jesus Christ. Without the fourth man, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have perished. Without the fourth man, the story would have ended terribly. Without the fourth man, their faith will never have been validated. Ladies and gentlemen, without the fourth man, I would not be here preaching to you. Without the fourth man, I would not be here sharing the word of God with you. I am here today. I have been saved from many situations because of the fourth man. The fourth man is still available even today to anyone who is cast in varied fires of life. What fire has life thrown you into? Pray that you interact with the fourth man. The fourth man is also described as the third man that we also need. In Malachi chapter two, verse 14. Malachi chapter two, verse 14, the last book of the Old Testament. The Bible says that you ask why it is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. The Bible says that in every human relationship, whenever people come together as husband and wife, God presents himself as the third man. Any time men and women come together as a husband and wife, God comes in, whether invited or not invited, God comes in as the third man. He is the guarantor of every marriage. He is the guarantor of every relationship. He is the third man. And ladies and gentlemen, don't we face a lot of troubles because of our relationships? Aren't relationships causing a headache? Aren't there cold blood murder in relationships? Aren't relationships the reason why some people commit suicide though they shouldn't? and they should know it is sin? Aren't relationships the reason why some people will have a short lifespan instead of a long lifespan? I'm here to tell you that there is a third man who always involves himself in all human relationships to ensure that all goes well.
well. He is there to guarantee that the relationship goes well. And whoever does not do well in the relationship, he is there to discipline, to punish, to put straight because he is the third man that comes in into all our human relationship. Are you dating someone? Are you looking forward to date someone? I'm here to tell you that you need the third man. Are you having relationship issues? You need the third man. If we fall in the fires of the crisis of life, we need the fourth man. When we get into any relationships, we need the third man. I just came to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you need the fourth man. You need the third man. Malachi tells us that God is the third party in any marriage. Malachi tells us that God is the guarantor of marriage for all marriages and all human relationships. God is the third man, the third man in every relationship. Don't you agree that you need the third man? But you see, we said, ladies and gentlemen, that you need the fourth man, you need the third man, and you also need the second man. You see, friends, when you read the Bible in John chapter 15, verse five, Jesus said, I am the vine, John chapter 15, verse five. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus says that you and me, just by ourselves can never achieve anything in life. But ourselves plus Jesus, the second man, then everything becomes possible. We can bear fruit spiritually. We can bear fruit financially. We can bear fruit academically. We can bear fruit socially. We can bear fruit in many ways if you and Jesus, the second man, come into your lives. Jesus is the second man in your life. And when he comes to your life, you can bear fruit. You you need the fourth man. You need the third man. You need the second man. Jesus is the second man that makes a difference in your personal pursuits in life. What are you trying to achieve? You need the second man. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to leave here by making the same statement that I've already made, that you need the fourth man. You need the third man and you need the second man. I need the fourth man, I need the third man, and I need the second man. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, this is our need today. For the fourth man, when we go into the fires of life, various fires, may the fourth man be present in trouble with us. We need the third man in all relationships that we go through. We pray that in all our relationships, may the third man be there, our God, the guarantor of relationships. And dear Heavenly Father, in our personal pursuits for success, we can never achieve anything without the second man. We pray that may the second man abide with each and every one of us. This is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.